Of boxing outdoors at Luton, the stadium alive with anticipation. We're almost ready for the entry of the Clonus Cyclone, Benny McGuigan. Our ringside team, Jim Watt and Reg Guthridge, are standing by. But now here comes the Brazilian opponent, Thomas de Cruz. And it's a long job, job there for Thomas de Cruz. I must say, the confident character speaks very little English, but uh, was shaping up at the way in there. And was saying to McGuigan, well, definitely going to go for you. But unfortunately, he got the wrong McGuigan. It was his brother Dermot, which is a slightly easier fight. But, but nonetheless, it, this fellow's a quality fighter. I covered his fight when he fought the, the great fighter, Julio Cesar Chavez. And he still finished that fight standing on his feet. I know he was taking plenty of stick but he wasn't over. Now, if McGregor gets him down, that is a good performance. Nine stone, three and three quarters, 129 and three quarters. So finally found his way then to the ring and gets a little gargle there. They don't have a drink boxes before they get in. Very tall he is, Thomas de Cruz. And he's hoping for a little bit of applause from the crowd and he just gets some polite applause from the ring guard. A bit, a bit of booing from the stands there, which is a, obviously a very Irish, this is an Irish town, I think they call this Luton. And uh, he's not getting any help from them. The referee is Larry O'Connell, a Londoner, former amateur boxer of quality, and one of the good referees around today is on the WBC list. And there's the spot they're going to pick out. The man himself and the cheers. Barry's back again. This fellow really does have incredible crowd appeal. He was more worried about that on his first comeback fight against Nicky Perez than the opponent. This time, I think, he's got to worry a little bit more about the opponent. Tunnel vision in many ways, though. He's really dedicated himself to this. Young people are not always keen on that word discipline these days, but in this game, you just got to have it or you don't survive. And certainly Barry McGuigan can do that. He can hold up in a, in a health farm now for two or three weeks, quite near his new home in Bedfordshire, the uh, Henlow Grange Farm uh, Health Club. And, uh, he likes it there and he gets himself into shape. It's not exactly eating rusty nails back in the Rocky Marciano days and snarling at everybody, but nonetheless able to concentrate on the job in hand. He knows he's being seen not only across the Great Britain, but also in America. So he's exceptionally popular, of course, despite the fact that the last cruise he fought actually defeated him, Steve Cruz, the Mexican-American in that blistering heat in the Las Vegas desert. Uh, remember that had he not been lost in that last round, McGuigan, and he not really faded, it would have been one of the great wins of all time. And there he is up at his new weight then, super featherweight, that's nine stone four, and he came in right on the button, despite the, what I thought was a silly protest really from Thomas, Thomas de Cruz's people, uh, Carlos Peters his name is, he was jumping up and down, uh, because he hadn't quite seen the scales balance, but in fact I was there also and uh, McGuigan came back and jumped on them again and he was very relaxed, extremely relaxed. So I remember now it's a, it's a cool evening here at, at Luton and he's, he's got to keep working and working up a bit of a sweat there McGuigan. The old Cockney firm there, the think tanks in his corner almost, Ernie Fossey and Jimmy Tibbs now. 
uh, taken over from his former Irish trainers and thing now that he's changed camps and he's working under the Frank Warren banner it's gone up to WBC number six on the strength of one win only one fight in 22 months McGuigan so that's what the ratings committee think of him he's always been quality right back from his amateur days gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games fought for Ireland in the Moscow Olympics and we're going over to the announcer then, Peter Dennis, to introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event in this Frank Warren promotion from Luton Football Club, sponsored by Ryanair in association with the Luton International Airport. A super featherweight contest of 10 rounds, three minutes each round, the contest made at nine stone, five pounds, 131 pounds. This is an elimination contest for the world title. Fighting out of the red corner, ranked number four in the world by the World Boxing Council with 30 wins, 17 of them by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Francisco Tom In blue shorts, with 32 contests, 30 wins. 22 by knockout. From Ireland, the clone cyclone, the former featherweight champion of the world, the one and only Barry McGuigan. Please sit down in your seats. Would you please take your seats immediately? Thank you. Thank you at the weigh-in at 12 o'clock today, the crew scaled nine stone three and three quarter pounds, 129 and three quarter pounds. McQuiggan scaled nine stone four pounds, 130 pounds. Your timekeeper, Mr. Teddy Turner. Your referee, Mr. Larry O'Connell. Well, there it is now. Larry O'Connell has already obviously been into the dressing room with an interpreter, presumably, to talk to the crews. But the crews has fought in Europe before, not successfully with the Chavez, who is now the present lightweight champion of the world. So he's really steamed up now, Barry McGuigan. But this fellow, good boxer. And his management say that in boxing terms he's got a strong chin. Well, we'll find out. Scheduled for 10 rounds, and as you can see, he's got good advantage in height here because. But the training drills of McGregor, but again, have been very impressive. He, he really is so much stronger, just four pounds heavier than as when he was world featherweight champion. The last time he was in the open air on the football ground, of course, Queen's Park Rangers won the World Championship against Pedrosa. advanced chance of here we go for McGuigan but uh, I'm sure he's got a deaf ear to that he's got too much on his mind at the moment what I could see of the crews doing is just a brief workout while he was in London got a pretty sharp right hand punch he flicks with the left hand then crosses with the right hand punch get his timing right now McGuigan it's never easy only one fight in 22 months and that little split second between the impulse and action that's we've been out the ring for a while that often happens in shows
fancies himself as a bit of a moving Pele Jim this fellow he comes from the same uh, town at least he lives in St Paulo he comes from the uh, sea fleet well there is a slight boxer but that was a good right hand from McGregor there caught the cruise a little bit high seemed to shake him slightly I, I don't know if it's troubled him seriously but it caught him just just above the eyebrow and looked to shake him slightly but uh, McGuigan will obviously want a good start. He seemed a lot more keyed up in his comeback than he was in his first career. So we're looking for a good start to get into this fight and get all his old confidence back. Another good right hand from McGuigan. Just flick past his chin there, Jim. Just the whisker. Surprising the length actually of McGuigan's arms, although the other fellow looks so much taller with a reach advantage. He has exceptional reach, McGuigan. It's deceptive. <laughs> well, a good searching round that Jim, I thought, didn't you? Have a good look at each other, and he's not a bad boxer, this fellow. It was a good opening round, and the, the first minute and a half of the round, McGuigan was made to miss several times. Uh, and missed quite badly but as the round progressed and towards the last minute of the round he started to get through with his punches he got through with a couple of very good right hands one which seemed to slightly shake the cruise a little bit but uh, an excellent first round meanwhile he's getting the wash and brush up treatment there from uh, Jimmy Tibbs and in, in replay now you see what's his left hand it goes through there and then McGuigan starts to look to throw the right hand punch so it doesn't quite unleash it at that point Ten seconds. Second out. Round two. Coming out for the second round then. It's very much a world championship eliminator this. They, they both come inside the super featherweight limit of uh, 130 pounds, 9-4. The McGuigan looks just a quarter of a pound heavier, doesn't mean anything. Sets his standards very high, McGuigan. He said, I don't want to talk negative about but I'm not satisfied with my performance of not going on. I just want to get this one over and box well and satisfy myself. He worked so hard at the game. And as far as money's concerned, one would expect that he'd be safe for life anyway. He's our company director. A little bit of a chess match they're playing here, Jim, aren't they? Trying to kid to each other a little bit to lead and counter. Yeah, I've always felt that McGuigan is one of the best. You can see McGuigan's complaining about Cruz's head there. But I've always felt that uh, McGuigan is one of the best pressure fighters Britain's ever produced. And he's now beginning to exert some of that pressure, you know, pushing the Cruz back. This is what Barry does best, and this is what he must do. Surprised at him complaining there. That's not normally Barry's game. He's been accurate with the body shots too, McGregor. Sometimes he's been known to drop them low, but uh, he's been very accurate so far with the left hook. That's the punch. The right hand over the top of the cruiser's left lead can do the damage there. There it is again. Clipped right around the ear. And now he knows he can get through with it, McGregor. He's going to let that punch go a lot. Watch for that. Oh, he's already got him on the hook here. This will be a, a really good performance. And he can do him in the second. And it looks like he's going to. Because he's trying to cover up the cruise. And he won't go down. He did this with Chavez. But now will Larry O'Connell give him every chance to come back? Yes, it looks as though he will. And he's fighting his way back. He's a gutsy guy. Because that really was a good salvo of shots there coming in from McGuigan. He also came back with a good punch of his own. That was a solid hook that landed high in McGuigan's head. Certainly plenty of courage and a good chin. 
as his manager said before the fight. And we're coming up to the end of the second. Jim, have a look at this in replay then. Well, we'll get McGuigan really took over there, some tremendous punches, it looked as though the Cruz was going over, and just as it seemed it was all over, he came back with a cracking punch of his own, but at last McGuigan has, showed, has shown the power to trouble the Cruz, and that must have lifted his confidence tremendously. Look at the punches going through here, very accurate, very solid, all the way through, doesn't leave the Cruz alone, a little, little bit of success, and Barry really opens up. But uh, the Cruz come back with a good punch of his own, just in the middle of this burst, Maybe we'll see that now. There it is. That's, that's the punch he come back with. A, a good left hook of his own, but uh, all Barry in that burst. Round three. Well, he's really got the excitement back into the crowd now, but I tell you, the, the referee did well there, I thought, Leo O'Connor, to give the crews every chance and I've seen Condé stop at that point many a time but uh, quite rightly let him get on because he really started to come back as Jim uh, what pointed out there well the Cruz is a, a a world title contender he's a world class fighter so the referee O'Connor gave him a chance to come back and he did come back Got to really stand on his toes, as they say. Wiggins got to get always getting a punch in range, pushing the man back. Oh, doubled that up. Body switched it to the head. Brilliant right hand shot. Those. Well, there's no ring rust there, Jim. Is it really is good stuff? Now this is excellent stuff from McGuigan, even going back now and counter-punching, showing us a little bit of everything, and you can see the extra power he has at the super featherweight, far more comfortable at that poundage. Oh, he's, he's doing the job again here on the cruise. The cruise's gun shield comes flying out there. And the referee's kicked it back to the corner there, you... The old promoter from uh, Brazil, Abe Katz Nelson, working in the corner. The promoter, fun enough, another Irishman, John Corbell's fight with Ada Joffrey. That's the way to duck inside, Ponce. They're wild shots, and McGuigan could see them coming, but still stood his ground, just moved his head enough. Minute to go in round three. Doubling up the punches again. He's looking to the corner, the Cruz, Jim. That's a bad sign. He's looking for a way out here. Shall I go? He's holding on. He's brave enough there. And he's, it looks as though he's dying for the referee to come in because at this point he is not throwing punches back. Or is he going to do as he did in the previous round? Soak it up and then try and come back. If he doesn't throw something back, referee O'Connell's going to have to move in. He's doing nothing. He's so wild too, Cruz, when he comes back. It's all desperation stuff right above us now. And it's a question, surely, how long uh, Larry O'Connor's prepared to let this fellow take. He's not taking them all on the chin and saved by the bell again and uh, falls into O'Connell's arms. But it's a long haul back for this fellow. And there's the elderly Abe Katz Nelson. He can hardly get in the ring. He's, he must be topped in 80 now, I would have thought. Nearly, anyway. And this fellow, he, he kind of run out of ambition in the middle of it, Jim. Once they start looking to the corner, we may be able to see that in replay. Now it's got past that point. I think McGuigan punched all the fight out of Cruz uh, in that round. Cruz was looking over at his own corner, looking for some help, looking for some advice, and none was forthcoming. But McGuigan just kept the pressure all the way through. He didn't sag or lag, he didn't drop the, the pace. So obviously McGuigan is in excellent condition. Far more power than Cruz has, and he's got control of this fight far sooner than anyone expected him. Ten seconds. Get off. 
So uh, Barry O'Connor's been staring all through that round at Thomas de Cruz. He went to walk towards the corner. He didn't interfere. He let the seconds get on with it. Into round four. And it really is a world-class performance now by Barry McGuigan. This man's rated WBC number four, IBF number five. have identical records they're both 27 years old it looks so much of an even match on paper but there you go home ground advantage now for McGregor he only lives a left hook away from the Luton ground Love the way he stands right in front of the cruiser. He's not scared to get inside punches. Then that takes a bit of doing. No, well, this is the old McGuigan. We wonder if we would get him back again, but we do have him back again because everything is, is as it was before. Good attack, good punches, good power, and good defence. It's really an excellent performance so far from McGuigan. McGuigan really looking for that that big finisher. He'd, he'd like this one to have the sort of finality of a gunfight, wouldn't he? That's the way back to show the Americans that I'm ready. And they're going right above us, and uh, he really is showing the distress signals now in the fourth round. And yes, it's all over there. It was inevitable finish, because even in his own corner there, the Cruz and the referee being compassionate with him as uh, McGigan jumps into the arms of his brother, who's always first in the ring. He had yet to see brother, I call him. With the uh, trainer, Jimmy Tibbs, who said he's never trained such a more competent fighter in his life as this fellow. And Barry's back definitely in world class after that. We were a bit non-committal when he fought Nicky Perez at uh, Alexander Palace. Has so much pride, Jimmy. He's, uh, he really is the true pro, isn't he? That was a tremendous performance. It, it didn't just defeat the Cruz, it completely and totally dominated him. Cruz looked apart in the first round, but as soon as McGuigan raised the face and really went to work, they got control of the fight and they kept control of the fight. He could have stopped Cruz in the earlier round, but he made no mistake there. The referee had no choice but to stop the fight. And there's his kid brother in there again. With Barry, he almost ducks through the security guard there as the official pictures are being taken. And, uh, he's doing it well there, O'Connell. He's turning him round for the, the press uh, Fleet Street Brigade there. And a good moment there for Barry, isn't he? Being able to carry his youngster around there. And, uh, all this, all this trimmings makes such good pictures for the newspapers, doesn't it? They, they love this man. He's, he's just a natural, and uh, all they say about him is true. He's, he's a nice guy. And we'll thank everybody in sight directly afterwards. There was a certain, well, oozing confidence about him, wasn't there, Jim? That was a tremendous performance all the way Ladies through, and, and no one can see uh, Chavez's performance in against the Cruz was any better than that. Of the fourth round, your referee Larry O'Connell stopped the fight to avoid further punishment to a very fine loser, ladies and gentlemen. But please let us welcome the future featherweight champion of the world, Barry McGuigan! Well, he might have got the weight wrong there, as future featherweight champion of the world, he's saying, but uh, there's still a way to go. It's, it's bring on Rocky Lockery, bring on Azuma Nelson, whoever wants it. This, this fellow's back and he knows it. There's no question now that he will want to go on the challenge again for another championship. For a very fine loser, ladies and gentlemen, Francisco Tomas da Cruz! Barry, you said you wanted to find out a few things about yourself and about your future in this fight. What is the future for you? Uh, I said I'm not going to put myself in the corner, Jimmy. It's been very difficult to put me in the corner, but I'm not going to put myself in the corner. All I can see is going 
happy with that. Uh, he was very strong. I hit him with some good shots, and he would not go down. But uh, he's a tough guy. Chavez only done him in three rounds, and he never put him down. And uh, he gives Chavez a great fight. So I was very happy with it. I'm sharp, I'm quick, and I'm not missing the target too often. You know? right. I'm happy with that. In your first fight, you were very self-critical. You said you were unhappy with your timing, but you got right into your work yeah. so quickly tonight. You must be delighted. Yeah, well, I worked very hard for this one. Uh, all credit to Jimmy Tibbs. He put me in a superb condition. I'm very, very happy with him. He's doing a marvellous job with me. And I think it showed, it showed tonight that I was on, on the ball, and I'm very, very pleased. I'm very thankful that Frank Warren has given me a chance to resume my career and become world champion again. I'm just very happy. Uh, millions of people watching here and watching in America. They're yeah. seeing seeing the finish of the fight here, Barry. I'm sure you'll be delighted to see it once again. Yeah, well, I see the left hook at the end there. But I, I, he was presenting very little target. And I was trying to hit him around the side. And a few times I was borderline. But I'm trying very hard to get that right. And I'm working very hard on it in, in the gym. I think I've got better combinations now. I'm throwing more punches. And uh, Jimmy has, has done an amazing job with me as far as uh, uh, putting yep. my combinations together. You know, as you can see there, once I had him going, I never let him off the hook. He was a tough guy, but Jimmy just predicted it exactly right. He said, this guy's going to be a, a, a hard guy. He's like Frank. I both said it's going to be tough for a few rounds, but just keep on top of him. Keep picking away at him on the fall. Next time in the ring, is it going to be for the world title? That's a 60 million dollar question. <laughs> That's why I asked it. I know, I'm not going to answer it either. Uh, I'm going to go in four days, have a rest, and I'm going to make my mind up. A better Barry McGuigan second time round, do you I feel? I think so. A stronger Barry McGuigan anyway. And I think I proved that tonight. That's a full, fully fledged leader lightweight, a big man, and I've done the job. And just a word about the support you've received here. <laughs> Marvellous, absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm very happy with it. They seem to have adapted me very well here at Luton. And uh, 